Want to know the latest in soccer? Then listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. From MLS, the World Cup, and the Premier League, we've got you covered. The latest updates, the hottest matches, and news on the league's top players. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. David Beckham scores the goal to take England all the way to the World Cup Finals. Listen now. All right, and welcome to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network, and as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, you know what we're talking about today, at least for the first segment, and probably for the second segment also, Champions League Final, okay? Usually the best final in soccer besides the World Cup. I'd say for club teams that the Champions League final is the best. And I think that's a pretty fair assessment, wouldn't you say? I mean, does anything really come rival it? FA Cup is cool, but I don't really think... Like, like you won't watch the FA Cup if you're not a fan of the league, okay? You'll watch the Champions League final even if you're not. Like, let's say that Manchester City made it into the um, final or whatever. Or no, we had a liver, we had an English team. I already, what am I saying? But yeah, we had Liverpool, like, even if you weren't a fan of the Premier League or, like, La Liga, you'll still probably tune in to watch it, okay? That's just how it is, is what I'm trying to get at. All right, let's see. Is there any other club competitions? The Club World Cup could be cool, but I feel like they don't do it the right way. Like, I understand it's, like, from every little team's Champions League, I guess. Like, they got the CONCACAF Champions League, UEFA Champions League, and all that. They need to do it to where, like, they need to make it, like, an actual tournament. Rather than, I guess, having it, like, every year. Alright? Because I get it's the whole, like, you win your perspective, whatever. It's CONCACAF, UEFA. You win that Champions League, you get in. I'd say, let's do it every four years where it doesn't conflict with the World Cup, Confederations Cup, or anything like that. Alright? I understand, like, the summer is for the international team tournament, so I guess that's a bit difficult there. But maybe you could do it, like, a, like in May or something. I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out a way to bolster up the Club World Cup. Something where it's like every four years qualifying, whatever team has accumulated the most points over those years gets in. You do like three teams from each league or whatever. I mean, you could have MLS teams, Mexican League teams, La Liga teams, UEFA, or not UEFA, uh, EPL teams and all that. I don't know, just something to make it a little bit more interesting, you know? I mean, where we got like maybe, let's say, the LA Galaxy playing like Real Madrid or something like that. I don't know. I'm just throwing out, throwing things out there. Maybe River Plate versus Bayern Munich. Something like that, you know? Just something to throw out there. But nonetheless, I mean, yeah, I'd say getting back to it, the Champions League probably is the best. Yeah, it is, without a doubt, the best final for as far as a club tournament. But it does not come close to the World Cup, I feel. All right? But again, that's probably my opinion. I might be in the minority in that one because, I mean, I feel like people value the clubs more than the national teams. All right? I know that's how it is in England. It's more so you put your club before the country. Whereas I think over here, back in the United States and Mexico and stuff like that, I think it's more so national team over club. Okay. And I think with... Uh, yeah, in Europe it's a little bit different. In Europe I think it's club before um, international or national team. But nonetheless, it is a bit different, I guess, over there compared to over here. Okay. So... Here's what we're going to be talking about today, obviously. Like I said, we got the Champions League segment one. We're going to talk about the possibility of Bale or Ronaldo leaving in segment two. More so Bale, because it seems like Ronaldo was just trying to create headlines. But we'll talk about that too in the second segment. Third segment, we're going to talk about some of the international friendlies that went on yesterday. We had a couple of teams that played. So we're going to talk about, not more so just go in depth about them. We're not going to go in depth about their games. we we'll talk about, you know, what stage they're in right now, what they're preparing for and all that. Because we have the U.S. playing. They're not getting ready for the World Cup, but obviously they're preparing to develop these youngsters that they got going out. All right. So we'll be talking about that. Mexico played yesterday. We also had Korea play yesterday. South Korea, I should say. 
Nigeria played to, um, yesterday also. We had Italy playing. Balotelli scored, so I'll talk about that a bit. Portugal, France, so a bunch of different teams that played. And we might just split it up again into three and four segments. Tonight, we got Argentina playing. And then, like I said, for the fourth segment, we'll talk about pretty much whatever else is going on in the world of soccer. And also just anything that really crosses my mind as far as the soccer world goes, you know. Because it's always, it's always good to get conversation going that way. Think of some new stuff. But nonetheless, that's what's going on. So let's get into it. Okay, so we had the Champions League final on Saturday. Very excited. Usually I work on the weekends, but nonetheless got the weekend off, was able to watch the game. All right. I think that was the first. Usually there's always something or reason why I missed the Champions League final, but nonetheless got to watch it. All right. And I was excited for it. If you remember, my pick to, for the game was Liverpool to win 3-2. to two. Okay. And... I don't think that this is that was necessarily an off pick or anything like that. Like obviously I got it wrong and it was Madrid who put up three goals instead of Liverpool. But going into the match, I figured that Liverpool's attacking three of Mane, Firmino, and Salah was gonna be a problem. Okay. And it was. Alright. For the first I say twenty five minutes of the match, the the um Liverpool was the better team. Okay, they were attacking. It looked like they were going to be the first team to get a goal. It was Madrid on their back foot the entire time. They tried to counter, but it wasn't really working out. Okay. Then Sergio Ramos happens. Okay. And I mean, you're watching the game. It's a good game. I'm excited about it. I'm thinking, yeah, we're going to get a very good game. I very well could get this 3-2 prediction right. And as much as I love Ramos as a player, okay, He's probably my favorite player in the world because I used to play defender too when I played and you always usually tend to watch the guys that play your position. All right. But I mean, just seeing him grab Salah's arm. Okay. And it's up for debate whether or not it was intentional. I'm going to go out and say, in my personal opinion, I mean, I'll never know for sure because I mean, it very well could have been unintentional. It's just they got tangled up somehow, some way. But I do think that Ramos, again, my opinion, Ramos pulling him down was intentional. Okay. And I'm not sure that, I mean, if I think it's intentional, I guess I got to think that his intention was to take him out of the game, right? Or at least rough him up a bit. I mean, because that's exactly what he did. He did take him out of the game. He had him. He had his arm wrapped around. And you see, okay, you know what? They're tangled. But there's moments where they're going down. Ramos could easily just let go and catch himself with his own arm. Okay. His arms. He doesn't have to hold on to Salah's arms the entire time they're going down. And he doesn't really let go until they tumble around a bit. All right. And that kind of took the air out of the game at that point in time. I mean, of course, it's the Champions League final. So, of course, there's always going to be a good atmosphere around it no matter what. But it's a point where I do think that Ramos did it on purpose. Okay. And I don't. I don't hate Ramos for it or anything like that. He's still a favorite player of mine. But there's a point where you're already a great defender. I feel like he could leave the dirty like the dirty stuff out of it. Okay, You don't need to be bringing players like Salah down like that. Okay, And again, we'll never know for sure whether or not it was intentional or not. That's up to him. Okay, But it's a point where it did kind of... It did... It did um, affect Liverpool after that because he tries to play. I mean, there's no way he could have. He tries to, though. Ends up coming out a few minutes later in the 30th minute. They end up bringing Adam Lallana Le- in. And, I mean, Le- Le- is, is it Lallana or Lallana? Okay, it's got the two wheels in between, so I think it's Lallana. All right, but nonetheless, you get what I'm saying. Okay, so he comes in. He gets moved to the left. Mane comes to the right. And... You can tell, I mean, they're trying to still keep the same shape and all that in their formation, but it's just not working out, okay? They're not um, getting the same attacking chances. Madrid pretty much took advantage of Salah being out. Now Madrid's the attacking team. And then eventually it comes where, I mean, it was just a comedy of errors for Liverpool, okay? In the 51st minute, Karius, the goalie for Liverpool, goes out, makes a mistake, bends him against the ball, ends up shooting it in, okay? So that's a goalkeeper error right there. And... You figure that, you know what, it's a goalkeeper error, but you're still in it, all right? And sure enough, they were. Four minutes later, Mane comes out, scores a goal in the 55th. It's tied 1-1. It's like it's a brand new ball game. Plus, that ends up, um, injects a little bit of momentum into Liverpool's side. Then, Gareth Bale comes on into the match. 64th minute, I mean, probably scores arguably the best Champions League final goal of all time. 
I like the bicycle kick by Bale in the 64th, which made it 2-1. But I think I'm going to stick with Zidane's goal against Bayer Leverkusen, I believe it was. In, what was it, 2000 or 2001? Where it was like, like right at the end of the match. That's the game winner there. I'd say that one was the best one, given the volley and all that. Okay, but nonetheless, Bale scores a great bicycle kick in the 64th. Then it's 2-1. Liverpool's fighting back. They're trying to get into it. Okay, then the 83rd minute comes. Bale takes a shot from a long ways out. Okay, it was on target on that, but it was very far out. Usually any goalie, professional goalie, at least playing for a top club like this, would be able to make the save, but Karius ends up fumbling it into his own net. Okay, which was, I guess, sad to see. All right. Yeah, so Bell took the shot. It looked like it knuckled a bit. And I don't, I think Karius was just pretty much deciding, like, do I catch it or do I punch it out? And I don't think he really had his mind made up by the time the ball got there. And I think that's one of the problems why it went in. So he tries, it looks like he tries to do a little bit of both, but it ends up hitting off the top of his fingers. Not the fingertips, but more so the part where, like, your fingers yourself and you just don't have enough force to block it. So it ends up falling back into his own net. And. I mean, what can you do after that? It was 3-1, and we all knew the game was over, okay? And, I mean, this game, I'm not going to go out and say that Ramos taken out. I mean, like, Liverpool did have chances, okay? They did. It's not like Liverpool was completely dominated. I mean, Mane um, hit the post. A little bit later on in the game after his first goal too. And like they had chances. But I mean taking out Salah did affect them. We're not going to act like it didn't. Okay was that the sole reason why they lost? I'm not going to go out and say that. Given that. Given that Madrid still played well. But I mean it was a problem there. Okay. And then you had comments by Ronaldo and Bale after the match. Which we'll talk about in the next segment. Okay but nonetheless I mean it was overall for me an entertaining Champions League final. We had a close game where it was 1-1. We had a great goal, and we had a couple of goalkeeping errors. All right, and some controversy. And now it's just a matter of whether or not Salah is going to be back for the World Cup, and I'll probably give some thoughts on that in the fourth segment when we talk about anything else that's crossing my mind or any other news or notes in this world of soccer, in the soccer world. So we're actually going to wrap it up here, but like I said, Madrid champions once again, fourth Champions League in the, um, the last five years, won this match 3-1. Liverpool fought hard, but just wasn't their day, so... We'll be back for the next segment. Stay tuned. And like I said, we'll talk Ronaldo and we'll talk Bale. Are you looking to get your college football fix? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. We spent that first segment talking about the Champions League final between Real Madrid and Liverpool. My prediction was wrong, obviously. Madrid ended up winning that one 3-1. You gotta feel bad for Karius, the keeper, though. I mean, the Liverpool keeper. Giving up two goals like that where they should have been, shouldn't have even happened. I mean, let's say you take those goals away, it's 1-1 still. Okay. And you just feel bad for the guy because you see him walking over to the fans after crying and apologizing them. And he goes, and then he goes to Twitter and apologizes there too. You could tell he truly felt bad about the performance that he put out. But it's just Liverpool, Liverpool fans were ruthless. And I guess I don't want to say uh, some of them. Some of them were saying some really harsh things. But I do understand some who were not saying the harsher things, but just more so mad at the fact that he gave up the two goals like that. 
All right. And I'm not really sure if he's going to be the keeper for next season. And that's one thing with Liverpool. They've been going with Mingle the last couple of years. And then it's Karius this year in the Champions League final. But they do need to bring in an actual decent keeper. Okay? That's something I think they should have done a while ago. And that's something they should have focused on now. Okay? They finally just barely fixed up the defense. I mean, they refused to buy defenders. And it seems like now it's time to finally go out and get a keeper. Okay? And also with Liverpool now, I mean, it's a matter of keep the talent that you have rather than let him, letting them go to Barcelona like we've seen the last couple of years, okay, with Suarez and Coutinho. Keep the Salas, keep the Firminos, keep the Manes, all right? Don't let those guys go. Guys like Trent Alexander-Arnold needs to stay, Andrew Robertson, all right? They got some very good talent there. So, I mean, as far as Liverpool... It's going to be another year before they win a top trophy, okay? Haven't won the Premier League in years, on top of years, on top of years. I think it's a couple decades since, all right? Last time they won the Champions League was in 05 when they played Milan, I believe it is. So they still got some work to do, I'd say, for this transfer window. I mean, they're, they're already bringing in Fabinho from uh, Monaco, so that's going to help out the midfield a lot there, which I really like, all right? So right now, I mean, you'd probably be running with... Mane, Firmino, Salah next year. Fabinho. Let's say Wijnaldum. And either Milner or Henderson as of right now. And then the same defense lineup. And then obviously I think they do need to bring in a new keeper. Okay. But nonetheless, I think the future is bright for Liverpool. I mean, I'm sure this is what they expected with Jurgen Klopp. All right, to get to the big games, and he's getting them there. Now it's just a matter of going out and winning the thing. And I'd say that if they keep this team together and just keep adding talent, that they're not far off from being Premier League champions, I think. Okay, came extremely close that year. They had Suarez, except for Steven Gerrard slipping up and letting Demba Ba take it all the way down and scoring. All right, I'll never forget that either. But nonetheless, I think they got a very good future. Okay, they will be a top team in England and a top team in Europe, I think, in no time. And if not... Oh, I don't want to say already, but they will be very close, okay? So there's that. And as far as Madrid, I mean, now it's just moving on to the transfer window. Who are you going to bring in? Who are you going to sell? Is Neymar going to come? All right. And after the game, after the Champions League final, where they were celebrating all that, you had Bale and Ronaldo being asked questions and all that. Ronaldo gets asked questions about his future every every summer. I feel it's always the United rumor that likes to pop out, and I'm sure we're going to see this rumor, um, see that rumor this year. It's just a matter of when. All right, will we see it in June or will we see it in July? I'd say I'm going to call July on this one, given that the focus is going to be on the World Cup in June. All right, but nonetheless, they get asked, asked, and Gareth Bale basically. Basically hints that he's going to be leaving. Okay. He says that he wants regular time. Meaning starting 11 minutes. Okay. Week to week. And I understand that. I'm not sure really why Zidane doesn't favor Bale as much as one probably should. But I mean Bale is a great player. Bale has always seemed to have a knack for showing up in the big games. Whether that be that one Champions League final where they played Atletico Madrid, I believe that was the final where Ramos um, had the 90th minute header, which sent it to extra time. Then in extra time, you had at, uh, Angel Di Maria driving it down um, the winger left wing side, crosses it over Bale, and Bale scores the um, go ahead goal, which made it 2 1, I believe. Then you had the Copa del Rey final where you had, I don't think Ronaldo was playing either in that one. All right, against Barcelona, you have Bale and Mark Bartra fighting for the ball. Bale kicks it a, um, uh, far ways down the line to, on the left. Him and Bartra are racing forward. Bale gets the ball, beats Bartra easily in that little race for the ball, gets down to the keeper, and ends up scoring the game-winning goal there. And then here you had him scoring the go-ahead goal and the put-away goal. Okay, so Bale usually always shows up in the big games. And I'm not sure really why Zidane refuses to start him, but nonetheless, I do understand why Bale is leaving. And as for teams he could end up with, it seems that the one constant team that keeps showing up is Manchester United. Okay. And I think that Bale would be a good player for United. You could put him on the wing there. All right. It'd be probably Lukaku, Sanchez, Bale. All right. And then the midfield, Matic, Pogba, and Ander Herrera, whoever else you want to throw out there. And then with the back four of Bailly. 
I'm sure they're going to try and bring in someone new. Actually, they probably need to fix up that defense a little bit more. All right, then you got De Gea out there. I mean, I've seen also that... I've also seen that Arsenal are a team that... could be in the running for Bale. Okay, that's a name that's been thrown up. But I don't really see that happening. If anything, I just see him going back to Tottenham if he's going to go back to London. All right, but I do think he will be back in the Premier League this this um this next upcoming season. All right, I don't really see him fitting well in the Bundesliga, and the only team he could really go to in the Bundesliga is Bayern Munich, and I don't see that happening. He's not going to go from Madrid to Barcelona. He's not going to go to Atletico Madrid. So I guess the only opportunity for him is in England. Of course, unless he wants to head to China and just get paid absurd amounts of money. All right, I would like to see him back at Tottenham. Alright. But I don't really see that happening. I think Tottenham are a bail player away from being a top team in the in the Premier League. But like I said, I just don't see that happening. So he'll probably end up with a team like Manchester United, okay? So Bale was asked about his future. He was very truthful about it. And then, like I said, Ronaldo was asked about his future. Ronaldo seems to enjoy the spotlight okay and I don't think that's news to any of us so he doesn't score in the game and seems that maybe he was frustrated possibly at Bale scoring his bicycle kick goal all right but nonetheless he's asked about his future okay and Ronaldo says in the coming days there will be a decision about my future it has been very nice playing for Real Madrid. That quote comes from Dermot Corrigan, all right, ESPN writer. He spends all the, um, his time in Spain and all that, paying attention to La Liga. So he got that quote from Ronaldo. And obviously, looking at the quote, when he says it has been very nice playing for Real Madrid, it seems, you know what, it has been great, but I'm moving on to better things now or something different, okay? And... Of course, the next day at the team celebration, all that trophy celebration, Ronaldo says he'll be back next year. All right. And that's just classic Ronaldo, isn't that? Obviously, his plan, as far as saying that he's enjoyed his time in Madrid and all that, given the, I guess, the question of are you going to be back next year at the time of day, is to create the headlines. It's to create the buzz around him. Okay, and that's something that I've never really liked about Ronaldo. I don't really like that about many players is the fact that they will try to make the story about them rather than just letting it be and enjoying the Champions League win. Okay, because that's what everyone was talking about after the was 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 Ronaldo's quote. All right, and then the next day you go out and say that yeah no I'll be back definitely. I mean how does that how does that work out there? Okay. And you got Sergio Ramos saying that he wasn't a big fan of the of Ronaldo's antics. And, I mean, rightfully so. You go out and say that, that's going to put the team on red alert. And then you go out and say, no, I was just kidding, I'm coming back. I mean, what are we doing here? Okay. And that's one thing I like about Messi compared to Ronaldo is that Messi isn't really in the headlines too much. Unless it's for financial reasons, obviously you know what I'm talking about. Okay, but as far as the ego-driven quotes and all that, you don't see that with Messi. He is a team guy, okay? And I'm not necessarily comparing them right now. Well, I am comparing them. I'm just more so talking about their attitudes as far as to the teams and themselves, I guess. Okay. So, I mean, Bale probably is going to be the one that's leaving. And I thought, too, after Ronaldo made that quote and Bale talked after the game, too, I figured that, you know what, they are going to end up selling these guys, and that's what they're going to use to buy a guy like Neymar. All right? And... Just seeing the Ronaldo seeing what he said after the game and saying he's going to come back, it doesn't seem. I don't. I don't see a fit. Like it's. I think it's going to be a couple of Eagles clashing if Neymar were to get there, because Ronaldo needs to be the spotlight. He needs to be the guy, and you know, if Neymar were to go to Real Madrid, Neymar would get a lot of the headlines. Okay, Neymar is soccer's next big thing. All right, people my age more so looked up to Messi and Ronaldo, watched them. Now Neymar is for the younger generation that's just coming in. And you could tell if you've paying attention to the, like I said, the younger kids around you. They're all about Neymar. Okay? They love the style. 
the hairstyles and all that, the footwork and everything about. Him. All right. And Neymar is the guy who's probably going to end up taking over soccer once Messi and Ronaldo are past their primes, whenever that may be. I mean, these guys are about 30, 33 years old. They still haven't really slowed down. Okay. So, I mean, Bale, I do think, is going to be leaving. I think Benzema is going to be a guy that goes somewhere else, too. I'm not really sure where Benzema would fit. He's been at Madrid for quite some time. Maybe a team like Juventus, possibly, but they do have Higuain there. Maybe you could see Benzema in the Premier League or even end up with a team like Bayern Munich if they were to get rid of a guy like Lewandowski. All right. So we'll see what ends up happening. But like I said, I do see Bale leaving. Ronaldo, obviously, I guess, isn't. But of course, he loves to be in the headlines. So we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to be talking about the international friendlies that were played yesterday. Not so more, not more so talking about the games, but the storylines of the teams that did play. So stay tuned for that, and we will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. So far today, it's been pretty much all Champions League. Spent the first segment talking about the game itself, okay? It's going to be a debate about whether or not Ramos did intentionally mean to hurt Salah. In my opinion, I think he did. Like I said, we'll never know because Ramos is probably just going to go out and say he didn't. All right. And if I guess he said he didn't, then that means he didn't. But like I guess we'll never know truly. Okay. But I do think that that did help change the game. I mean, Liverpool looked like a completely different team once he came off. When he was on, they looked like they were about to score and all that. Looked like the better team, I'd say. All right. But now, we must wait till next time. All right. So yeah, Real Madrid ended up winning that one 3-1. And then after the game which we talked about in the second segment, you had Bale and Ronaldo being asked about their futures. Okay. And both seemed like they were ready to leave. Bale pretty much talked about the fact that he wanted weekly starts. Wasn't getting them here, so he was um, welcome um, to the point of, you know what, I'm probably just going to end up looking elsewhere to play. And Ronaldo, of course, said, you know what, I've enjoyed my time here, but I will be making a decision about my future in the coming days. Okay. And when someone says that, and that sounds like they're truly thinking about leaving. Okay. Especially when he says that he's enjoyed his time there. And when he... When he goes out to the trophy presentation the next day and says he's coming back... It was a PR stunt, okay? He was never thinking about leaving. That was never the case. And that's just classic Ronaldo there. And I mean, that's just, it's either you love him for it or you hate him for it, okay? When you're out here and you're the biggest thing at the club and you're always throwing out these little notions of, you know what, I could be leaving, so talk about me and stuff. And I think that's all it was. I mean, he didn't score in the game, okay? He didn't really have any crazy plays or anything like that. I mean, in reality, he was a big no, wasn't a big part of the match, honestly. Okay, I thought Liverpool did extremely well to deal with him. 
especially both outside backs. I mean, you saw Ronaldo going to both sides, not really doing much. Going to the middle, not really doing much. Okay. And Ronaldo is a very ego-driven player, so when there's not a storyline about him, he's going to go out and he's going to pretty much create a story for them to talk about. Okay, I'll never forget when they were beating Atletico Madrid in the Champions League final. They're up 3-1. Ronaldo gets a penalty. He makes it. They're up 4-1. Game's already, game's been over. Okay. But nonetheless, he feels the need to take his shirt off and celebrate like they, like that was the game-winning goal right there. Okay. And like I said, that's just the way Ronaldo is. He's very ego-driven, and you can't really, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to get mad at it, but it is a little old. Okay. So we've talked about that for the first two segments. Actually talked about it a little for this segment also, but... Nonetheless, I mean, we had a couple, uh, we had a few international friendlies going on yesterday. Like I said, not going to get into the games more so rather than just talk about the storyline surrounding each team. All right, so we had South Korea playing Honduras. South Korea won 2 0. You had Sun Hoang Min scoring the Tottenham. I don't want to say superstar, but the dude is, was, had a very great season with Tottenham this season. All right, with South Korea, the storyline is can you finish second? Okay, can you beat a Mexico? Can you beat a Sweden? Can you possibly pick up a draw with Germany? All right. And South Korea usually always has a de- decent team. They're not the top of the top in the world or anything like that. But nonetheless, they're a team where you don't you don't underestimate them. Okay, you simply don't do that. They've done well in the last two Olympics with their younger squads, and now those guys are starting to come of age in order to play in a World Cup like this. I mean, let's say a Mexico who I think is a better team than South Korea shows up and really isn't really taking it, not, I don't want to say taking it serious, but like just underestimate South Korea. That's a game South Korea could win. Okay, South Korea are good enough to beat a Mexico and good enough to beat a Sweden. Will they? I don't think they'll beat Mexico. They could beat Sweden, but like I said, you just don't want to you just don't want to how do you say, underestimate them. Alright, so it's going to be tough for them to get out of that group, but nonetheless, I think that they can. It's just a matter of I guess their matchups against Sweden and Mexico. You had Nigeria playing. They drew 1-1 with Congo, or Republic of Congo. Congo. Nigeria is a team I could see getting out of their group with Argentina, I believe, who's in there. And I think Nigeria is a team who could go a little far in the World Cup, possibly make it to the quarterfinal. I'm not sure. I think they got a very decent team. All right. And we had Italy playing yesterday. Obviously, they're not going to be in the World Cup, but nonetheless... They beat Saudi Arabia 2-1. That's not the story there. The story is Mario Balotelli making his return to the Italian national team. He ends up scoring in the 21st minute. Balotelli is a very different player. Okay. He's got the ego, all that, the antics, but he just doesn't have the quality to go along with it. Like, he's a he's a good player, but he's just not good enough to where you want to deal with it, you know? But, nonetheless, I do think that, I mean, he's probably too old to play in another World Cup, unless I'm just severely, like, just really thinking he's older than what he is, which I'm going to double-check right now. But, he's a guy where I think he probably does need to revive his career, but he's been doing well. With where he's at. I would like to see him eventually. He's 27. If. Let's say he goes. To the right team. Plays well for a few years. He could find himself back on the Italy World Cup team. By the time 2022 gets here. Okay. I would not put that past him. Alright. So. I'm not ready to give up on Balotelli yet. Still think he's got a lot left in him. Alright. And then we had France playing yesterday against the Republic of Ireland. France wins 2-0. You had Giroud scoring. I think that puts him near Zidane as far as the all-time list. I don't think Zidane's all-time, but as far as third, I believe it was. That's where Giroud is near. All right. With France, they've got a very good team. Okay, that's no um, surprise or anything like that. And it's just a matter of with this team, it always seems that there's some problem going up going on in the World Cup for them. Okay. And I think that now is probably the time to get it together. Okay. We got guys like Pogba, Griezmann, Conte, Mbappe. Like, this is a team that can win the World Cup. It's just a matter of can they all stay on the same page and... Yeah, it's pretty much stay on the same page and pretty much just not hate each other. Okay? It's going to be tough. 
But they brought guys like Mbappe, Lamar, Griezmann, Giroud, Dembele, Conte, Matuidi, Pogba, Varane, Mtiti, uh, Mendy, and then you got Lloris, okay, along with a bunch of other players. Those are just the notable ones that I named. I mean, that's a lot of quality there. They should do well in this tournament. It's just a matter of whether or not they can get it together, okay? And let me double check their group, what it's looking like. And I don't think they have a relatively tough group or anything like that. All right. Nonetheless, let me pull it up and see what we got going on here. Okay. Let me see. France's group is going to consist of Peru and Peru. And who else is in there? For Peru, Denmark, France. And let me see. Who's Denmark playing the first week? Denmark, Australia. So France has an easy group. They should make it out. I think Denmark's the team who could make it out or possibly Peru. But nonetheless, France should have no problem making it out of their group. It's just a matter of beating the top teams once you get out of there. All right. So we'll see what ends up happening with France. But like I said, they do have the talent to go out and play well. All right. And then we had the U.S. national team playing against Bolivia yesterday. Obviously, the U.S. isn't really playing for anything. All right. Which is sad to say, just given that I'm sure Fox was expecting to make a lot of their money, just given off of the casual viewers coming in to watch the U.S., but obviously that's not happening. They won 3-0 against Bolivia, and like I said, now it's just a matter of it's a matter of getting ready to develop. We're just developing the younger kids for the 2022 World Cup, okay? I mean, there's no point in playing a Josie Altador or... Josie Altidore, or Michael Bradley, or Clint Dempsey anymore. Okay? I mean, what good are they going to serve for 2022? Now it's just a matter of getting these guys the minutes that they need. All right, let me see how Clint Dempsey is right now. Dempsey's a guy who I wouldn't... Oh, he's 35. Yeah, he's done. So, yeah, Dempsey's done. Bradley's done. Altidore's done. So now it's just the Pulisic's of this team and the other young guys. Okay? And I'm sure by the time 2022 gets here, they will be qualified. But it's a matter of also, you need to find the the right coach. Okay. I still, to this day, don't think that they should have fired Klinsman. I think they would have made the World Cup with Klinsman. And I think that Bruce Arena is a stubborn coach who doesn't really get it. Okay. So as far as the U.S. now, it's just a matter of developing players. And then you had Mexico playing Wales, or Wales yesterday, Drew 0-0. It wasn't their top team playing, okay? You had Chicharito and Hector Herrera playing, but other than that, it was a bunch of fringe players, I guess, who were just trying out to make the 23-man roster. So, I mean, with Mexico, it's just a matter of are they going to be able to get past that fifth game? Or get that fifth game, I should say? All right? They've done well to get out the group, but it seems every time they make it to the round of 16, they just fold. Okay, we'll see if they're able to do it, but... I mean, that's all I got to talk about right there. Tonight, we got Argentina playing and all that. So, we'll probably talk about Argentina a bit in the next segment. But like I said, we're going to talk about anything else crossing my mind as far as the soccer world goes and any news and notes else going on. So, stay tuned. And I will be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. And welcome back to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. So far in these three segments, we have talked about the Champions League final, the idea of Bale or Ronaldo leaving, and we talked about a few of the teams that played yesterday in their international friendlies. Okay, Some teams playing for World Cup preparation, some teams just playing to develop for the next World Cup, I guess, in 2022. Okay, So now for this segment, as we always do, going to be talking about anything else going on in the world of 
soccer, excuse me. All right. So let's see what we got going on right now. Minnesota or FC Cincinnati, excuse me, going to be joining MLS as an expansion team. Uh, I'm not sure really how I feel about this. Okay. I feel like maybe I'm a little bit biased, but maybe the Sacramento team. I understand the Sacramento team has a little bit of money issues as far as the ownership and all that goes as far as getting in and all that. But nonetheless, I mean, Sacramento is a team I would like to see eventually in the MLS. But also, I think it's just maybe a point where why don't we have promotion and relegation for the MLS? Okay, I hate the fact that people say you don't need it. That's fine if you think so. But there's a reason why every other league around the world does it. Okay. I understand America is different in a lot of different things as far as not just soccer, but everything else around the world. Like we don't use the same metric systems and all that or whatever the term is. Okay. But there's a point where there's a reason why MLS has been so poorly thought of. All right. And I do think that relegation or promotion and relegation would be fine. I mean, just have the USL partner up with the MLS and all that. Whoever wins the USL ends up making it in or whatever that second division league is that the Sacramento Republic play in. And, I mean, you've got other leagues. And I think that'd be better for soccer in this country rather than having it where it's just a bunch of franchises like the NFL. Okay, and yeah, it is the USL. But, yeah, I think they should do it that way. Okay, have teams promoted and relegated. Why is it, why is there a need to be different? Okay, I don't understand it. The MLS is the only league that really does that. If not the only league in the world that does that, actually. Okay. I don't understand it. I mean, and maybe it's more of a money thing where, I mean, you don't really have the opportunity of going down in a second division league. But I do think that this is something where maybe the MLS could do with, but I don't think it's ever really going to happen. Okay. But nonetheless, yeah, since FC Cincinnati is going to be in the MLS. And there's this talk about a rivalry with the Columbus crew, but how is there going to be a rivalry when the Columbus crew won't even be Columbus for much longer? All right, they're still trying to figure that out, but I mean, come on now. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves, okay? So there is that. There was also TV footage showing Mohamed Salah, Salah out of a sling, okay? Didn't need one. That's a plus. I'll tell you that much, all right? And I think he is going to be playing in the World Cup. All right, and rightfully so. I mean, it would have been a shame if Ramos took that away from him. Okay. But nonetheless, I mean, it's going to be tough for Egypt to get out of that group. They're playing Uruguay, um, Russia, and I believe Saudi Arabia is in that group. And Egypt do have a team, I think, good enough to get past Russia. But there is the point where you will be playing in Russia and it will be difficult to beat a team like Russia in their home. All right, so that's the only thing I really worry about for Egypt is just the fact that will they be able to deal with the Russian team playing at their home in front of their fans? Okay, but I mean, it's ridic- like it's not ridiculous. That's not the right word. It's amazing, I guess, impressive, eye-opening to see that Egypt basically hangs on Mohamed Salah. Okay, of course, you got a lot of political unrest going on over there and all that. When you got the Egyptian national team playing out there with Salah, I mean, everyone just stops what they're doing and unites a bit. All right, and that's one thing that's good about the game of soccer itself is it does well to unite other, or unite each other, I should say. Okay, so it looks like he probably will be playing, and I mean, that's good for him. All right, but let's see, anything else going on in the world of football right now? I don't really think there's too much going on. It's just a matter of a bunch of transfer rumors going up. All right, and let's see. Now that the season's over, who would my top team, top teams be in your room? I'd say my top five would be not in order right now, but Madrid, Barca, City, Bayern, and would it be Liverpool? I think it would be Liverpool, given that they did make the Champions League final. As far as ranking them, I'd say that probably, I don't know, I'm torn here because that Barcelona won the league. Madrid won the Champions League, but it's a point where, I mean, which team do you truly think is better? And I think Madrid winning the Champions League, it's just a matter of what you put more emphasis on as a team, all right? You could always focus on the league more than the Champions League and try and win it that way. Or you could fun, um, focus on the Champions League more instead of the La Liga and go that way. All right, but I'd say that probably 
Barcelona was no Madrid the better team than Barca then by then actually hmm, this is tough because Liverpool did beat up Manchester City and I was going to put Bayern third but I was like I don't know do I put them ahead of City I'll say I'll put City third Bayern Munich fourth Liverpool fifth okay I understand that Liverpool beat City in the Champions League but it's a point where I mean City won the Premier League in January and that's got to count for something okay so there's that. And I think I want to pick my World Cup bracket right now. Okay. I think that's what I want to do. I think that's what we're going to do. All right. The World Cup, I mean, I do have some upsets. Maybe I'm a little too biased on a couple of them. Okay. Which, I mean, sometimes you do have to go out on a limb. All right, but nonetheless, let's look at it right now. All right, so I think, let's see. Let me open up one right here. Let's see, all right. So you got in Group A, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Uruguay, and yeah, so those teams. Okay, I'm going to go and say that Egypt and Uruguay make it out. Uruguay being number one, Egypt being number two, okay? So that would put them up against... Let's see. I'm going to say Spain wins Group B, or wins Group B, and Portugal comes in second. So I'd be Uruguay versus Portugal on the round of 16. Spain versus Egypt. Okay. Then we head over to Group C, where we got France, Australia, Peru, and Denmark. I'm going to say France wins that group, and Denmark ends up. No, I'm going to say Peru. Yeah, I'm going to say Peru ends up finishing second. Okay, I'm going to give it to them. So we got France winning it there. All right. So France would be playing the winner, the number two of Group D. I'm going to say that's Nigeria, okay, and I have Argentina winning that group. So it'd be Argentina versus Peru, France versus Nigeria, all right? Then we head over to the opposite side. We have Group E, okay, Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica, Serbia. I'm going to say Brazil wins that group. Costa Rica finishes in second, all right? So then we've got Group F. They'd be playing Group E, the guy, two teams that come out there. Germany, Mexico, Sweden, South Korea. I'm going to say Germany wins that group. Mexico comes out in second. So it would be Mexico versus Brazil. Germany versus Costa Rica. All right. Group G, Belgium, Panama, Tunisia, England. I'm going to say Belgium and England make it out. Belgium wins it. England comes in second. And then Group H, you get Poland, Senegal, Colombia, Japan. I'm going to say Colombia and Poland end up making it out. So we'd have... Colombia versus England, Belgium versus Poland. All right. So now let's move to the round of 16. So like I said, we got Uruguay playing Portugal. I'm going to go Portugal. Spain versus Egypt. I got Spain advancing. Okay. So it would be Spain and Portugal in the quarterfinal. I head over to the bottom of the bracket there. France versus Nigeria. Argentina versus Peru. I'm going to go with Argentina over Peru, France over over um, Nigeria. I don't know. Do I want to pick Nigeria and go out on a limb? No, I'm not going to go on a limb yet. So we got Argentina versus France in the quarterfinal. Spain versus Portugal in the other quarterfinal there. And we'd have Brazil versus Mexico. I'm going to go with Mexico, okay? Mexico always plays Brazil well, and I think they're going to be able to steal one, whether it be in penalties or whatever. That's going to be my first upset, Okay. And then we got Germany versus Costa Rica. I'll go Germany. So it would be Germany versus, I believe it would be Germany versus Mexico in the quarterfinal. The bottom, we'd have Belgium versus, what did I say, Poland? Yeah, Poland. And then Colombia versus England. I'm going to say Belgium wins and England. I'm going to give it to England, okay? So we'd have England versus Belgium. Moving over to the quarterfinal would be It'd be Portugal versus Spain. I'm going to go with Spain. Okay. And then we'd have France versus Argentina. I'm going to go Argentina there. So we'd have Argentina, Spain in the semis. All right. Germany, Mexico. I'm going to say Germany advances to the semifinal. England versus Belgium. I'm going to go England. All right. I'm going to say England finally does something in this World Cup. So we'd have England versus Germany in the semis, Argentina versus Spain. I'll say, hmm, I don't want to have an Argentina-Germany final once again. 
But I think we might have to. Now I'm going to go Spain against Argentina. Germany versus England. All right. So we got Spain versus Germany. Last two World Cup winners. I guess I'd go... It'd be a tough match. I'd go Germany because of Spain's lack of an attacker. All right. I don't like Morata or Costa with that team. So I guess Germany are my champs. And I'll say Argentina ends up winning the third place match. So England finishes in fourth. All right. That's not set in stone. That's just off the top of my head right now as as far as who I got going, where. But nonetheless, I mean, Argentina, Spain, Germany, Belgium, Brazil. Those are all the favorites right there. Brazil could very well beat Mexico, which they probably will. But I wanted to go out on a limb there. Okay. So we're actually going to wrap it up here. Today we talked Champions League final. We talked Baylor, uh, Ronaldo possibly leaving. Third segment, we talked about a few of the teams who had international friendlies going on on Monday. And then for this segment, we talked about FC Cincinnati going into the MLS. We talked about my top teams of Europe so far this or this year, this season. And then we made a f- my picks for this year's World Cup. And again, don't hate me for it. I was just throwing some stuff out there. So thanks for listening to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. We will be back next Monday. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program